Well, thanks for joining us today, everybody. And uh, yeah, a little, little out of the normal for a uh, regular Monday uh, weekly press conference. But uh, I did just want to make a brief statement, and then you guys are, are welcome to fire away with questions. But uh, yeah, so um, Saturday morning, uh, uh, we, we decided to make a, a change in our head coaching position. Gary has... Uh, step down and uh you know this this is not a knee jerk reaction this is not a you know a, a, a one day or a one game or a one event type thing uh he and i've been in uh you know pretty close uh conversation and and meetings over a period of time and you know the, the first three weeks uh other than a snippet here or there uh was not uh, Aggie football, as we have grown accustomed to uh, the success level, and and really, uh, other than maybe the first quarter of the uh, of the Nevada game the other night, uh, we really weren't in contention in any of those games, and uh, that's not the product uh, he wanted. That's not what I want. That's not what any of Aggie Nation want wanted. And it was not just a matter of where we were; it was the trajectory of the program as well. And, uh, and and so after carefully evaluating that, um, and, and again, it's uh, you know mid mid season, and I know one of you, or at least one of you, would probably ask that question. You say, timing wise, why mid year? Um, you know, a, after he and I visited again, uh, just just felt like we needed to go in a different direction. I'm excited about Frank uh, Miley taking over on the interim basis, uh, as most of you know. He, he took over two years ago after uh, Matt Wells left after the regular season to go to Texas Tech, and he did an outstanding job uh, in, in preparation for the bowl game and, and obviously a, a nice Aggie victory in that game. So I'm excited to, uh, to see what uh, he's going to do with our team over the next five weeks. Uh, again, su such an unusual year. Uh, way beyond Aggie football, but uh, you know, you know, Frank is an Aggie through and through. Played here, has been a coach here, multiple stints. Uh, you know, and and he's excited about the opportunity. Obviously, anytime you know uh, a guy that you work for, uh, you know, is, is no longer in that position, it's it's difficult and it's a time of anxiety. But he's excited about this opportunity, and uh, you know, I look forward to seeing us. Um, be very competitive over the next five five weeks and get some wins for Aggie football. We'll go ahead and open it up for questions for John. Please identify yourself when asking a question. John, this is Isaac Draxler with uh, 24-7 Sports. How important is it? I think a, a big debate is do you – do you look in state? Do you look at, look at a local coach? How important is it to have ties to Utah or to Utah State? Great question, Isaac. And, and I'll say this, and you know, I know some some guys in the media, and, and certainly some of our fans ha, have already tried to draw this comparison. Here's what I want: I, I don't want to establish any preconceived parameters. I want us to find the best guy for this job. Do they need to have an understanding of? Uh, you know, the return mission program, things like that. Do they need to have an understanding of Utah? Yeah, but do they have to have coached here, uh, lived here, uh, you know, have a certain number of, of people on the staff uh, that have been here? No, I'm, I'm not going to, to box us into that, nor am I going to box us into saying you have to have been a previous head coach. I, I, I want us to be wide open in this search. Uh, and, uh, you know, go find the best person, uh, the best candidate uh, to, to lead Utah State football forward. And, and I don't, you know, I, I've, I've got some ideas about what, uh, what qualities I'd like to see, but I'm not going to get boxed in in terms of, of um, candidates from that perspective. Hey, John. Trent Wood with Deseret News. You kind of referenced this, but just how long were you flirting with the idea of moving on from Gary? You know, it it was not really anything that uh, you know that we were looking at. You know, mid season, pre season, anything else. But uh, you know, he he and I had some really candid talks 
um, over the last few weeks. And, you know, uh, and, and I'll say this, uh, um, you know, his departure from Utah State should take nothing away from, from the body of work that Gary Anderson has done for our program. It, it has been outstanding. And it, obviously it was, it was pre my tenure at Utah State, but, you know, even just looking back and seeing the way in, in such a positive way that he flipped our football program uh, from, from years of mediocrity at best uh, into being, you know, a, a, an annual bowl participant and, and the way he did it uh, in developing young men, not just on the football field, but, uh, you know, in, in the classroom and, and preparing them for the game of life. Uh, I will be forever indebted to Gary Anderson, as will all of Aggie Nation for, for what he's done. But, you know, as, as we looked at this and had conversation about it, um, you know, just, just felt the program was not going in the right direction and, and needed a change. And, and again, uh, just like everybody would expect of Gary, um, totally above board. We had, we had very candid and, and good conversations uh, Friday and Saturday morning and leading up to this. Hey, John, Hi. Trevor Allen with, with uh, Channel 5. Uh, I wanted to ask you, what, what, what has been the reaction from the players um, since talking to them about Gary's, uh, about Gary stepping down? Yeah, you know, change is, is always a challenge. And so uh, early uh, Saturday afternoon, I, I met with his staff first. I think it was at 1230 on Saturday afternoon. And then with the players at one o'clock, and you know, um, and and again, there there's some passion uh, in that room, and and understandably so. And I appreciate that. I think that's good. But uh, you know, uh, our our players are resilient. Uh, they, <laughs> they've had to be resilient over the past uh, several months uh, dealing with the pandemic. You know, stop, start. You know, these guys are out. You know, my roommates out. Quarantine, all of those things. So it, it's been an emotional yo-yo for those guys. So you know, uh, knowing that this is a challenge uh, as well, but they're also resilient. I mean, they're. I, I think they're excited about. Uh, you know, the opportunity to get back on the practice field today and get ready for Fresno Saturday afternoon. Mr. Hartwell, Al Lewis here from KBNU. Um, is there in any way, when you look at this, is it just the competitive spot we feel like we're in the Mountain West Conference right now that just didn't feel like it's right for everybody with what's going on? Now, that's a great question, too, Al. And, uh, hey, I, I gosh, I don't know what I deserve to be called Mr. Hartwell, but please call me John. So, <laughs> hey, um, but – uh, and and that is, you know, and Gary and I had very candid conversations about that. It, it is uh, – this is a much different league that we compete in today than than was the WAC when, when he was here. I mean, it was a – you know, that was a good league, but this is a really, really good league. And, you know, there, there are no layups, uh, to, to borrow a basketball term. There are no layups in, in this league, and, and it's a grind. And, and the thing is, is people are getting better in our league. I mean, not just from a – you know, uh, a facility standpoint, but the the talent level is, is going up. And, you know, as, as you look forward uh, on the horizon and not that we don't have enough to deal with right now, but when you get into, uh, you know, what is likely going to be legislation passed um, at the NCAA convention in, uh, in January that, that's going to allow a one-time transfer, you know, at any time, uh, and for immediate eligibility, and then the whole name, image, and likeness component that's coming down the pipe. Uh, <laughs> this this game and and this business is not for the faint of heart at all. And uh, you know, uh, and and I think as as we look going forward, um, uh, the the energy and the passion and that CEO ability. I mean, yeah, the head coach is the head ball coach has got to have. Uh, great football knowledge and and the ability to recruit, but they've got to see over a vast enterprise, no different than a you know a Fortune 500 CEO. So it it uh, it takes a special person. But I'm again I'm excited about it. I think we have a lot to offer here at Utah State. I think we've you know we've proven we can win here. And uh, and, and and I can tell you this, uh, you know, in the past uh, 48 hours uh, since this broke. 
uh, my, my phone has, has blown up and, and in a very positive way and, and a lot of interest already before we've even really uh, begun the search in earnest. So I, I'm excited about it. One other quick one, John, uh, if I can ask John. Um, <laughs> Thanks. Miley, uh, what he does in five games, does that put him into the mix if he does well? You know, uh, that that certainly, and, and Frank and I, uh, you know, obviously had conversations, significant conversation before he – he accepted taking the uh, the interim position. Yeah, and I, I think it absolutely does. It gives him, you know, a five week audition, if you will. Uh, you know, there's there's no guarantee, no promise in there, but it certainly does not hurt him uh, having that ability. And I also told him, I said, hey, I know this is a difficult situation, and you know, you you're not going to be thought less of if if you don't go five and zero oh in this stint as the interim coach. But uh, I, I know this about Frank, as I'd mentioned before, his passion and energy and enthusiasm for the young men in our program and for our program in general uh, is not something that started two days ago when he was named the interim head coach. It's something that's it's been a lifetime for him. And I know he will get our guys prepared and have them ready to play hard uh, every single snap uh, starting this Saturday. Hey, John, Eric Franson with 106.9 The Fan. Uh, just a two-part question, I guess. First is a clarification. Did Gary resign, or did you choose to go in a different direction? No, it, it was it was ultimately uh, our decision, my decision from from a university perspective to go in a different direction. Okay, and then I guess the second part there is what kind of influence or 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 pressure did you receive from donors to make that decision? Not not influenced at all. I mean, it, again, it was. Uh, you know, not not a knee jerk reaction. It wasn't one game or you know one one thing that caused it. It it was uh, uh, you know where we stood as a program and the trajectory that we were on. And you know, uh, as Gary and I had lengthy conversation about it, um, you know, I made the decision. He he, um, you know, said, "You're right. We're not in a good place, and we're not going in a good direction." And and was was stand up just as you would expect uh, Gary Anderson to be about it. Hey, John, Ryan Miller from KSL.com. Speaking of donors, how much impact will they have on the coaching pro or coaching hiring process? Yeah, Ryan, uh, you know, obviously uh, <laughs> you, you can't just say, oh, we're not going to pay attention to donors. But but this is uh, President Cockett and I have had lengthy conversation about this Uh we, uh, between me providing, you know, whether it gets down to two or three uh, uh, candidates, very best candidates, and and her decision, uh, it, it's it's going to be a university decision, and and at the end of the day, uh, the buck is going to stop with uh, with myself bringing a, a recommendation to her, and her, uh, you know, either giving her stamp of approval or saying no, bring me the next person. So. Um, you know, donors will, will always have opinions, um, but in terms of uh, this decision, this will be a uh, an athletic director, uh, an athletic department, and university decision. Hey, John Trevor Allen again. Um, are, are, are you kind of putting a, a timeline of when you want to have a, the, the coaching place, or, or are you kind of just going uh, as it comes to you and, and just going throughout the process? Yeah, you know, obviously the sooner the better because it it what that does is it alleviates the anxiety of who it's going to be, what kind of coach is it going to be, you know, all all of those questions. But but I'm not going to uh, rush to a decision. I want to make sure that we get the right person. And, and the other nuance for this year, if you will, is you know normally in, in a normal season. Most regular season play is over by the, you know, the end of November, the very beginning of December, and, and with the uh, seasons being pushed back, uh, e either starting or being delayed by COVID. You know, most people don't finish till December twelfth, and conference championship games December nineteenth, and then bowl games after that. Uh, but but I, you know, uh, initial blush would say if we could find the right person. 
hopefully uh, on or before December 15th. I think we're doing well there and, uh, you know, uh, let them assemble a staff and get to know our, our current student athletes and complete the recruiting process and uh, get going towards uh, future success for Aggie football. John Ryan McDonald from Deseret News. You've talked about trajectory a lot. And so it, it, it wasn't just a, hey, 2020 is weird and let's let's move to next year. What didn't you like about the, the trajectory moving beyond 2020 about where things were going? Yeah, I, I think, uh, again, it, it's – it's first and foremost about Aggie football, but you've also got to look at what's happening around our league and, and uh, people's progress and improvement. And, and I just, you know, I didn't see that uh, in the current state of our program, even, you know, taken into consideration, obviously COVID has, has thrown us all a curveball. Um, but it, you know, again, uh, if you, if you do some comparisons, uh, if if you look two years ago at our program, and and obviously many things have happened since then, but if you look two years ago at our program, uh, you know around the first of December, I think we were first or second in the country, maybe second in the country, in scoring offense. We were up there in the top five in total offense. Uh, we were ranked number nineteen, I think as high as number nineteen in the country, um, and and you look at. Uh, you know, two years later, and and literally those those tables have been flipped in in the wrong direction, and uh, you know it that that's a challenge. And and again, you know, I I look at people around uh, our conference, their improvement, but, but I, I would also be lying to you if I didn't look at down at Provo and see see the job that they've done. And and again, two years ago we go into Provo, and uh, and, and beat. BYU pretty soundly, and uh, and you look at today, and obviously we don't play them this year, but uh, uh, they've Kalani's done a tremendous job down there and got that program going, and and I want to make sure the Aggies are are headed in the same direction. You you mentioned the offense. Is there any um, preference between offensive guy or defensive guy or anything like that? You know that that goes back to the to the profile that we're looking for. I don't want to box myself in, but, uh, but I will tell you this. Um, if it's a defensive guy, I want to know up front. I'm going to talk to them right up front about what their plan is uh, uh, to fix our offense. And, and again, you know, a lot, a lot of guys, uh, when, when you go through this interview process, um, they can't necessarily name names. Some can, depending on the situation. But uh, you know, that's uh, the the head coach. Uh, again, going back to that corporate model and the CEO, the the head coach runs the show. But you've got to make sure that you've got a really good staff assembled around you, uh, a, a staff that has synergy, a staff that that uh, knows how to recruit knows how to game plan, knows how to make in-game changes, uh, you know, can relate to, to today's young men uh, that are, you know, our student athletes. All of those things are, are keys, as well as, uh, again, you, you've got to do, uh, make sure from a community standpoint, uh, the involvement and, you know, donor cultivation, all of those things. There, There's got, everybody's not an expert in every one of those, but, but I want, I want somebody who has, you know, a working knowledge in all of those areas. Hey, John, Jason Turner from the Herald Journal. Uh, just out of curiosity, will you will you be using an outside firm? Any outside help in in the decision making process? Um, not necessarily in the decision making process, but I think and likely. It, Given the timing, and again, that most people's seasons aren't over for another six or seven weeks, uh, in all likelihood, I will just to be able to to maintain the the integrity of contact. Being able to, you know, it, it's while while guys are competing right now, it's not really right for me to pick up the phone call the phone and and call them and say, "Hey, are you interested in our job?" Because they're obviously. Uh, they obviously have a current job, and that that's one of the beauties of using 
a search firm is to be able to to have them, uh, you know, be basically a third party uh, to gauge interest up front, to be able to to have uh, indirect uh, conversation with those candidates. Mr. Harwell, um, Alex A. Harwell with the uh, Salt Lake Tribune. I'm wondering how closely you'll be looking at some of the uh, possible um, local um, guys, football coaches that, um, you know, you might kind of interview potentially for the, for the Utah state job. Sure. There, you know, there, there's a lot of success, as I mentioned, what, what's happening in Provo right now, uh, you know, and, and you look at, uh, you know, other programs in the area that have had success. So yeah, I, I would be very narrow sighted if, if we didn't, uh, at least put, uh, some of those guys, if interested into our pool. Any other questions for John? Okay. Guys, thanks again. And, and obviously we'll be visiting through this process and uh, uh, look, look forward to the day, hope, hopefully in not too many weeks uh, when we can have one of these uh, to announce the, the new Aggie head football coach. Thanks so much. Uh, Hope everybody's doing well, man. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be here with you guys at this time. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's an unfortunate time uh, for us here. Um, uh, but, you know, the biggest thing about, you know, our kids, they're, they're resilient and uh, they're relentless. And so even though, you know, it's been hard for those guys, they understand uh, the mission is still the mission and we got to move forward. Uh, but, but I would like to take this time to thank Coach Anderson, man. I, uh, if, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be sitting in this seat uh, for, for a lot of different reasons. He was really the, you know, the, the, the one person who gave me a shot at coaching uh, right out of grad school. And so uh, I owe a lot to him. I'm indebted to him forever. Uh, he's a friend, he's, he's family. Uh, he's, he's one of my biggest mentors that I've had in coaching and uh, I'll always love and appreciate and be thankful for him. And uh, so uh, with that being said, I, I don't have too much of anything specific to else to say, but that uh, I know there's a lot of questions, so we'll move forward. Hey, Frank, Al Lewis here from TVNU. Al, how, how are you doing? How different is this from taking over just for the bowl game? Is this a lot different, you feel like? Uh... You you know what I don't I don't know I don't know the difference you know what I mean uh th there was change I was put in a place where you know I had to lead uh, young men and 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 coaches forward and uh, I feel like I'm in the same situation again probably the experience of doing that for the bowl game helped a little bit uh, I think the only change and difference from uh, doing it then was uh, you know the whole staff is still here and so uh, if you remember in the bowl game there was only four full time coaches uh, and the rest of our GAs that were in in that uh, situation, but uh, I'm surrounded by good people. I'm surrounded by good coaches, uh, good individuals. Uh, we have a really good uh, group of kids, man, that are tough and uh, they're gonna fight till the end. And so I feel fortunate at this time that I'm still surrounded by good people to help me through this. Frank, from the Deseret News, is there any specific experiences that you're taking from your, your interim head coach at the bowl game to what you're gonna do now? Uh, you know, you know, the biggest thing for us is this is this is not about coaches. It's not about one person. This is about the kids. And so, uh, like I talked to the staff yesterday, uh, these next five weeks we owe to these kids. Uh, everything that we know, everything that we are, uh, mind, body, and soul, we have to give to these kids. That's what we owe to them. That's why we're in this business. Uh, and so nothing's changed from that perspective. It's always been about the kids. That's one thing I've learned from Gary is, uh, you know, everything's about the kids. Without the kids, we're not sitting here in this in this seat. And so uh, that that's the biggest thing for us right now. That's the only thing that really matters is uh, making this experience a, a good one to finish out these next five games. Coach oh, Jay Salveson here. Uh, do you or will you remain as the co-defensive coordinator or will any of your staff be changing as well? Uh, no changes will be made at this point. Thank you. Coach, um, Alex Fehar with the Salt Lake Tribune. In keeping with the idea that you said, you know, the next five weeks are about, about the kids and all that stuff. Um, the last time you were interim, you had just that one game. 
um, I think it was the bowl game in New Mexico, if I'm not mistaken. Um, now that you have like a much longer time, how much of how much of that are you going to kind of use to to just try to change the trajectory of the team because you have a lot longer time to possibly do that? Well, the big, the big thing for me is just one week at a time. So uh, I, I can't see next week. Uh, the only thing that matters to me is today and making sure we win today as a football team. So that's coaches and players alike. And so I'm taking it one day at a time, one week at a time. And the emphasis this week is Fresno State. Uh, and when that game is over, we'll move on to Wyoming. Hey, Coach. Ryan Miller from KSL.com. What was kind of your first meeting like with the team and what was your first message to them? You know, it, it was really, you know, the biggest thing for them, it, you know, that I, that I talked to them about, you know, football is the greatest teacher of life. And so this, this is real life, you know, what they're experiencing right now. Uh, and even though as you work as hard as you can and you feel like you're doing the right thing all the time, uh, bad things happen sometimes, right? Uh, there's obstacles that we face and they're, they're going through one right now. They, they're they're losing uh, someone that's very dear to their heart, uh, someone they love and respect. And, and quite frankly, the majority of them are here because of him. And, uh, you know, they're going through that right now. But what I told them at this point, you know, uh, as they're hurting, uh, they still got to be able to stand on their own two feet. And we got to get back up and we got to keep fighting. So um, the life lesson here is uh, you're, you're either a fighter or you're a runner. And that's really the conversation I had with those guys. And, and we have a team full of fighters. So uh, we got great leaders um, on all levels in every position. Uh, and so those guys are, I, I don't expect anything different than them rallying the troops uh, and getting them ready to roll to finish this the right way and finish it for Coach Anderson, quite frankly. Frank Ryan McDonald from Deseret News. Uh, is there interest on on your part in in looking for the head the head coaching job beyond these five weeks? Absolutely, that's my dream. Um, I'm, I'm I'm a true blooded Aggie through and through, and so. Uh, if that the future holds that, then so be it. Only God knows. But for me, it's, it's not about me right now. It's about these kids these next five weeks. And so we'll see what happens when that time comes. Uh, but right now, I'm only focused on these kids these five weeks. Hey, Coach. Frank, Eric Franson with 106.9 The Fan. Uh, when John Hartwell was on, he seemed notably concerned about offensive output for this team. What's your thought about improving the offense for the Aggies as you finish out the season? You know, the, I, I, I think I look at things in a different uh, set of lens, man. It's always been about two things for me football-wise, and it's effort and execution. Um, eff effort's never been the problem with our team. Right now, it's really execution of our game plan, and sometimes that means simplifying things. Sometimes that, being, that means being a little bit uh, more clear as a football coach as far as our message goes. And so to the staff, I, I told them we got to lead the way. We got to be an example. We got to make things clear, make sure the message is understood to everybody on the football team of what you're asking them to do. If you have to simplify, simplify it. Uh, we have talented kids. We have good players. They'll play hard for us. Uh, they'll play fast. They'll play physical. Uh, but we got to put them in better situations to be able to execute that game plan. So right now, efforts uh, always been great for, with these kids. We got to do a better job executing. And that starts with the coaches, just simplifying things and make sure the message is clear. Coach Miley, is as a uh, head coach, what would your offensive philosophy or what would your offense look like as a uh, in the perfect world. Yeah, man. It's it's uh you know I've I've been in in I've had success with with all kinds. Um and you know I I feel exactly the same way Gary did as far as playing complementary football. And so uh really this style of ops offense right here, um kind of a pro style, uh the shifts, the motions, all those things, trying to make uh make defenses earn it, make them think, make them move, uh, be able to switch it up, be able to run the football number one, uh, first and foremost, and uh, be explosive. Uh, and so uh, there, there's, I've been around the good and the bad. I've been around all of them, the air raid, the spread. And so I, I think there's, I think there's a benefit to all of them, but at the end of the day, it's all about coaching kids. Um, and so to me, all schemes are good as long as you can coach it. Hey, Coach, um, is there any drastic changes in a game plan philosophy that we can expect moving forward? Um, do, you know, do you know what? I, I, I told Bodie when I sat down with him about the offense, you know, uh, to, to be him, 
You know what I mean? Be be him and do what he came here to do. And don't feel any pressure from me. I, and, you know, I'm the last guy to walk into that offensive room and start telling him what to do. So I ain't going to do that uh, first and foremost. So uh, Bodie's well qualified to do this job. Uh, that's what we brought him here to do. And so I, I, I told him, listen, don't feel any pressure from me. You be you. We brought you here for a reason. You do that. And whatever you got to do to to make that happen, you put the best players on the football field. And if you got to simplify things, so be it. Uh, but but offensively, um, we just got to be better all around uh, from players to, to, to coaches. But it starts with us uh, relaying that message down. Coach, I know it's been a whirlwind couple of days for you. Have you had a chance to prepare for Fresno State or really see film on them? And, and what do you see out of them coming up on the Saturday? Yes, sir. And so we, we kind of started that yesterday. Like, like I said, uh, I mean, as as much as, uh, you know, some people think we're, we're – you know, as sad as the situation was, we we can't do that to the kids to sit around and, and, and mope and, and and point fingers and what could we have done better. We we got to move forward to give them a chance to have success starting this week. So we've already started game plan that started yesterday uh, with Fresno State, and so a, another explosive team offensively. So defensively, we ha we have our hands full for us this week. Uh, that they got a good quarterback, they got good skill players, they're spread offense, uh, they're a four down on defense, uh, quarters on the back end, and you know, they'll switch that up with some man and bring pressure. And so uh to tell you the truth, man, this week's about the Aggies. And so we got we gotta be better. We can't, you know, the game plan is not beat the Aggies this week. And so that's that's what we haven't been able to get done the last three weeks. And so this week is about the Aggies more than it is about Fresno State. Frank Al Lewis again. Speaking of Fresno, though, they played two quarterbacks and then the Rivers. Can you talk about the quarterback position and then how good Ronnie Rivers and how productive he really is in the running back and catching the ball? Yeah, yeah, man. So, so Ronnie's a big time. He's an elite running back now. So, so he's third in the conference, I believe, at this point. Obviously, leads his team in uh, rushing yards, uh, but he he's also second in passing and, and receptions. And so that that just makes it a little bit harder uh, for someone who can not only run the football, but he's a problem out in space. And they're going to try to get the football to him. So uh, that that's part of the game plan for us is we have got to stop number twenty. Uh, Rivers and uh, they got a quarterback who's a dual threat uh, a guy there with Jake number nine and so uh, he does a good job for those guys we got to contain him uh, we really got to disrupt uh, his timing his rhythm we got to make him feel uncomfortable uh, this week for us to have success and so if he's comfortable and he lets that ball go he's got some receivers that can be problems coach Motley, Jason Turner from the Herald Journal Fresno State already has 14 sacks defensively. Uh, one guy, Kwame Jones, has four. Is this more of a scheme thing, individual talent? Why have they been so effective in that regard? You know, it's hard It's hard to have an answer for that without having, uh, you know, re really monitored everything they've done defensively. I haven't been able to watch their defense too much, uh, game planning uh, for their offense. And so uh, a lot of that uh, just comes down to they have good players uh, and players make plays at the end of the day. And, and they've been fortunate to be able to do that. Um, and so hats off to those guys for for allowing that to happen. But on the flip side of that, offensively, you know, uh, our own line has got to do a better job. Uh, coach TJ Woods is a hell of a coach and he'll do a good job getting those guys ready to roll. You go to that right there, Frank. Is that something different you have to do now? Do you have to watch a little bit of offense? Do you feel like for what are, you know, I mean, our defense once in a while to kind of change things because you're on the head? Uh, do, you, do you know what? The, the biggest thing about, about the staff that we have is there's a lot of uh, – coordinators in those rooms. There's a lot of minds and experience uh, in all those rooms. So for me, I, I'd be the last one to step into the offensive room. I mean, Coach Schramm has coordinated offenses. TJ Woods is coordinating offenses and, and Bodie Reader is running the show right now. And so that room has enough minds in there and experience to be able to work together and have a good game plan to, to, to give the kids uh, an opportunity to have success on Saturday. So uh, I, I don't really feel like that's my place right now to go in there. Obviously, I'm going to meet with, with Bodie and the offensive staff and have certain conversations about situations and uh, personnel uh, but but that room right now is filled with a lot of minds that can handle the job kind of piggybacking off that question what is different this week for you preparation wise and just life wise than it was the first three weeks of the season <laughs> to tell you the truth nothing's really changed you know I, I sat down with my family uh Last night, my kids, I, I never really got a chance to tell them the, some of the changes. You know, I think they heard it from their friends first, but, uh, you know, my son's asking me what's changed, and I told them nothing's changed. I'm still dad. I still got to go to work. I got a job I got to get done. Um, 
And when, when I have time, I, I got to balance uh, family and life still. There's, there's nothing's changed there. My mentality is still the same. Uh, I'm going to give everything to the kids every single day when I walk in the office and uh, uh, try to be the first one in the last one out. So uh, nothing's really changed. Coach Miley, this is Isaac Draxler with 24-7 Sports. I have to ask you about uh, uh, recruiting. Does anything change there, or do you just move forward as is with the commits and recruits right now? Yeah, you know, we got to sit down and look at that, but we, we've we done nothing but honor commitments uh, since I've been here. And so I don't see anything different than that at this point. Obviously, things have changed in the 2021 season as far as rules coming out with uh, all the seniors getting a year back. Uh, and so for us, we had to put 2021 on a pause a, a little bit outside of the commitments. So as of right now, the, we've held true to all our commitments. Uh, we've honored all of them. And so that's something we got to sit down and make sure we're on the same page and that we're going to stay status quo with everything we've done here to be consistent. Coach, I'm Alex Sehar with the Tribune again. How much of a shock was the news that to you, to yourself, to the staff, and then to the players that Anderson was going to be leaving? It was a huge shock, uh, to tell you the truth. Had no idea, didn't see it coming. Um, yeah, man, it, it was it was out of left field, man. We had no idea. Um, it was a huge surprise for me, to tell you the truth. And so uh, I, I was a little confused about the decision, uh, but obviously the decision wasn't mine. Uh, I was not there to make the decision. And so uh, I, I can't speak to any of that stuff, but it was a huge surprise uh, that that had happened. And that was the direction uh, uh, the decision makers decided to go. Uh, but but for me, I, I can't do anything about those decisions. They weren't mine to make, uh, but, but be here for the kids because they need me at this point. And so I'm going to give them everything I got. Anything else for Coach, Coach Mylight? Oh, one Coach, last question. What, what Go would ahead. you tell the fans uh, that you know are are seeing of what's going on with this program? What would you tell them as far as what to look forward to for the next five weeks? We're gonna win. So. Uh, that's what I truly believe in my heart. Uh, these kids believe that in their hearts. There's, there's still fighting these guys. I told them we got five, five rounds left. So unfortunately, got knocked down the first three rounds. Uh, but like we do in life, man, you got to get up and settle your feet, get your base set in the ground, and keep swinging. And so uh, expect great things from the Aggies these next five weeks. So um, keep believing. Uh, that's a big thing with with who we are. It's been a blue collar community and university here and you know, belief in oneself and, and who we are as a family, as an Aggie family and brotherhood is, is is who we are at the end of the day. That's our DNA. And so I don't expect anything different, uh, but the fans that continue to believe uh, and com continue to love and support us. And so that's all I could ask of them. Yeah, first and foremost, I'd just like to thank Coach A. Coach A has been incredible to us over um, the past couple of years he's been here. It's um, unfortunate what's happened, but, uh, I know from personal experience, Coach A has always been good to us. He's always had our best interests at heart. Um, uh, I think it's unfortunate, you, you know, I try not to get too involved with that, the Twitter world, but it's, it's unfortunate to see the things said about a man who's uh, really dedicated a lot to us and this team. And uh, I'll always have Coach A's back and I know he'll always have ours despite the situation. And um, moving forward to uh, Coach Frank, um, I've been fortunate enough to know Coach Frank. He actually recruited me, and he's been the same person in 2016 when he was in my living room to uh, who he is now. And I think uh, there's nobody better than Coach Frank to lead this team moving forward. Um, this team has uh, full trust in him, and um, we're excited. Hey, Justice. Trent Wood with Deseret News. How does Coach Frank differ from Coach Anderson and just their personalities and their styles of coaching? Yeah, I, I think there's definitely similarities between the two. They're, they're both definitely family oriented, but uh, Coach Frank's definitely more soft spoken. You know, he's, he's a humble guy. He, he's a, extremely loyal. And um, uh, not to say he's not passionate or anything like that. He, you know, he's going to get on us when, we, when need be, but yeah, I think I think Coach Frank is just uh, slightly more soft spoken to say. Hey, Justice Al Lewis from KBNU and Logan. I mean, I don't know how to put this any more succinctly, but do you as players feel like you're responsible for what happened to Gary Anderson? 
I mean, you know, it's, it's the nature of college football, right? It's uh, it's the unfortunate side of this business, I would call it. But for me personally, I know I, I definitely feel a sense of responsibility because, uh, you know, that, that's being a head coach, you, you often get praised for the good things. And then when bad things happen, you get fingers pointed right at you. But to be honest, in my opinion, that's not the truth. I think me as a senior and a leader on this team, I, I need to do way better. I, I need to do way, way better leading this team. I need to be more productive on that field and to do a, a to help us win games. And it's, yeah, I know for me personally, I, I definitely feel a sense, you know, it's to just blame the, um, the outcome of the beginning of this year on, on one individual. It's, in my opinion, it's ridiculous, but yeah, I, speaking for myself, I would say it's just a little bit, yeah. Justice Alex Dehar with the Salt Lake Tribune. Um, how shocking was it for, for you guys as a team to, to hear the news about Anderson? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, um, it wasn't something anticipated or expected, and I, I'm gonna go back and say it again. It's it's just the unfortunate side of this business, but uh, yeah, I, I would say pretty shocked. Um, you know, yeah. Justice Ryan Miller from KSL.com. I guess looking forward, how can the team turn around quickly with a new head coach, or does that does he make that big of a difference? You know, I think I think it's, it's, it's you know kind of a reload week for us. You know, um, each week we're looking to go one and zero, one and zero, despite the record, despite what um, is occurring. And I know Coach Frank's going to get us right. I, I have full faith in Coach Frank and um, the current staff on this team, the players. I know. Uh, People kind of look at our record and kind of give us uh, this cold shoulder like we're not capable. I think we're more than capable as a team. I know we are. I know we have a talented group of individuals. We have, we have great coaches on the staff. And I, I know we can turn this thing around starting today when we hit the field. But, yeah. What gives you that confidence in Coach Frank? Just just knowing him over, you know, over the course of this year. And, uh this is my first year actually being in his room. So just getting to see how, how he lives his life. Um, he's extremely consistent. He's like I said, he's been the same guy I met back in 2016. And I think he uh, his loyalty, his uh, passion for this football game has definitely rubbed off in his room on, on us players. And um, I don't know. I think if you ask anybody on this team what kind of player Coach Rank is, they'd say the same. And I'm ready to go to war with that guy. Hey, Justice, Eric Franson with uh, 106.9 The Fan. Uh, you got Fresno State coming up this week. They've got, uh, as we've heard, a very dynamic running back and, and some, some good offensive skill players. What do you see in Fresno State as you prepare for them this week? Yeah, you just said it. they got a talented back. Um, they have an offense that complements their players very well. Um, yeah, yeah, I think, I think they're a talented group, talented group, well coached. And um, I know, uh, this, like I said, it's a good opportunity for us to go 1-0 this week. Um, I know there's a new sense of excitement in this locker room. We're, we're ready to get after it. Anything else for Justice? Just let me ask Justice one more. What, then defensively, Justice, what do you guys really need to do? I mean, obviously it's a complimentary game. The offense got to move the ball, keep it. But the defense, you've got to stop some people too. So. What do you feel like you guys really need to do defensively to get better now the last five games? I know it's probably a cliche answer, but I think we just got to be a fourth quarter defense. You know, I think we showed flashes. We started games pretty well. I think obviously some of the fun fundamental work, we need to tackle a lot better than what we've shown. We've uh, got to communicate better on the back end. But I think more than anything, um, just more collected as a group uh, when, you know, people are going to score. It's the nature of college football. They have scholarships too. And I think it's important for us to kind of collect ourselves and uh, play four quarter defense. Don't, we can't start hot and then uh, kind of dwindle down as the, as the game goes on.